Muslims, and Zengi, the hero of the Islamic world. The first phase of the jihad, the struggle against the Christian empire, was won. The taking of Odessa marked an important stage in the taking back of Jerusalem, because what it created was the feeling we can do it. Although Zengi had led his people to victory, he wasn't admired. He remained brutal and feared. He had told one of his slaves that the next morning the slave would be killed for having offended Zengi in some minor way. And the slave, assuming that his life was over anyway, decided to take Zengi with him that night. As the mighty Zengi slumbered amidst his proud army, ringed by his braves with their swords, he perished. Neither riches nor power were of use to him. Two years after the taking of Edessa, the 59-year-old Zengi was murdered in his bed. The hopes of the Islamic world might have died with him, but there was another willing to take up the challenge. His own son, Nur al-Din, a man who would prove to be a very different leader than his father. Nur al-Din was the son of the brutal Turkish warlord Zengi. He was ready to continue his father's battle, and he set out to unite the Muslim world and restore Jerusalem to Islam. Nur al-Din was a very pious man. You know, did not like too much play, did not like the way in which the caliphs lived in Baghdad with their opulence and their splendor and their dancing girls and their wines and said, one reason why we have suffered these defeats is because we as a people have become too indulgent. He was highly respected because he never